Revelation 17.3 is a prophecy loaded with intriguing information that unlocks the past, present and the future. Whether you prefer to call this period the New World Order or the End Times, momentous happenings are fast approaching. Revelation 17.3 So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-coloured beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. This prophecy explains periods of history, as well as the times we live in today, and a period that will soon come upon us all. The book of Revelation is in part a symbolic book. A woman in prophetic symbolism is a church. The woman described in Revelation 17.3 is the Roman Catholic Church that has assumed the place of God, hence the term full of names of blasphemy, claiming to forgive sins with a mixture of Babylonian pagan religion and Christianity. Scarlet is a colour widely used in the Roman Catholic Church. The Vatican will soon control the world using a deceptive system based on the ideologies of previous civilizations combined, as well as political teachings that are revered today. One point to keep foremost in the mind is that often a kingdom that succeeds another absorbs religious practices and ideologies because of popular belief, although the names of terminology might change. In philosophical terms, this is called the Hegelian dialectic. In prophetic symbolism, a head or heads represent major powers, rulers or governments. Revelation 17.3 is illustrating the mixture of ideologies of these empires in the last days under one religio-politico system controlled by the papacy. The first head represents the Babylonian Empire's influence of religion from 605 BC to 539 BC. The Roman Catholic Church is Babylon dressed in Christian garb. Most of the festivals the Roman Catholic Church practices are Babylonian in origin, from Easter, translated from Ishtar, sexual love and fertility, hence the Easter bunnies, the celebration of the birth of Tammuz held on the 25th of December, which in the Western world we associate with the birth of Christ and the observance of Sunday, that was the Roman sun worship day, has nothing to do with Christianity. Dia Solus, the worship of the Roman god Sol Invictus, is simply a continuation of the worship of the Babylonian god Shamash. Sunday started creeping in among apostate Christians about 70 years before Emperor Constantine enforced Sunday keeping by law in 321 AD, uniting Europe under one pagan Christian umbrella. The apostate bishop named Eusebius influenced Roman Constantine in this act. This little band of apostate Christians eventually became known as the Roman Catholic Church. The second head is Medo-Persian Empire, 539 to 331 BC, which symbolizes infallibility and irreversible decrees. The third head is the Empire of Greece, 331 to 168 BC, which symbolizes education and philosophy. Philosophy, from the Greek word philosophia, which literally means the love of wisdom, is the study of general and fundamental problems concerning matters such as existence, knowledge, values, reason, mind and language. The term was probably coined by Pythagoras. The fourth head is pagan Rome, 168 BC to 476 AD, which symbolizes power, seat and authority. The fifth head is papal Rome, 538 AD to 798 AD, which is the beast that is spoken of in Revelation chapter 17 and 18, etc. The sixth head from 1798 AD, which is not ended yet, but will end soon, this is a new manifestation of satanic power which arose during the French Revolution in Revelation chapter 11, declaring that there was no God but only human reason, hence the age of reason. This new manifestation of satanic power that arose from the French Revolution evolved rapidly into militant atheism that spread like wildfire. Examples such as the Soviet Union, Communist China, Communist Vietnam, and Cambodia's Khmer Rouge. An interesting quote from Pope Francis is that atheists can enter heaven. The seventh head is coming very soon. The seventh head is apostate Christian America. The United States will soon legislate a Sunday law giving homage to the Pope, because Sunday is the illegitimate child of the papacy. The whole world will follow suit of the Pope's spurious Sabbath, making non-compliance of Sunday by fine, imprisonment and even death. Let us quickly recap. Revelation 17.3 So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-coloured beast, 
full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. Okay, we have dealt with the seven heads. Let us venture further to explain the ten horns. A horn represents a king or kingdom with power and strength. The ten horns would be ten regions that are carved up similarly in blocks to, to those of the European Union. Amazingly, there are already ten global trading blocks, but as time goes on, these blocks will change and evolve into the ten regions or kingdoms. The Club of Rome was created in 1968 by the Morgenthau Group. Its original purpose was to create a new world order by the year 2000. The Club of Rome had a hidden agenda to divide the entire world to ten regions or kingdoms. The Club of Rome seems to have been superseded by the very secretive Bilderberg Group. The Bilderberg Group can be summed up in the goals and aspirations of the founders. Joseph Frittinger, Prince Bernard, Paul Van Zeeland and Walter Beadle Smith. Joseph Frittinger once studied to be a Roman Catholic priest in a Jesuit seminary and was concerned about the anti-American sentiment on the European continent. Rettinger approached Prince Bernard of the Netherlands, who in turn contacted Paul van Zeeland of the Catholic Political Party of Belgium. Prince Bernard then contacted Walter Beadle Smith, director of the CIA, and facilitated guest lists through Eisenhower's advisor Charles Douglas Jackson. The Bilderberg Group have another function, vetting British, European and American politicians to make the new world order happen. Revelation 17.12 And the ten horns which they sawest are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. The beast being the Vatican, which is a religio-politico power with the Pope at its head.